Welcome. This is the video is on the personal agonies of the Civil War. In this video, we'll be discussing religion and women. Trinidad State Junior College students, please download the study guide before continuing this video. For everyone else, just please enjoy. Religion and the Civil War. Both the North and the South thought they were fighting a holy war. Protestant, Roman Catholic, and Jewish clergymen saw the war as a religious crusade. In fact, one Episcopal bishop chose to fight. Leonidas K. Polk believed enough in the Southern cause to join the Confederate Army. Known as the Fighting Episcopal Bishop, Polk became a general leading the Army of Tennessee in the Western Theater. Every regiment had an ordained chaplain. Devotional services were held weekly and well attended. Some 1,300 clergymen served the camps. Most clergymen were Methodist. Religious revival swept through the nation in 1862 as casualties mounted on both sides. African Americans saw the Civil War as a recapitalization of the biblical exodus. In areas held by Union troops, many freed slaves created their own churches. Both President Jefferson Davis and President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed several days of fasting and prayer in the aftermath of important battles. This is the origins of original intent of Memorial Day. In 1863, President Lincoln proclaimed the fourth Thursday of November to be the official holiday for Thanksgiving in an attempt to foster unity between the states. And this came after author Sarah jo Josiah Hale conducted a 40-year writing campaign to members of Congress to make Thanksgiving an official holiday. Secretary of the Treasury Salmon P. Chase added the words, In God We Trust, to minted coins. So, whose side is God on anyway in this civil war? At first, Southerners perceived that God was on their side as they were victorious for much of 1861 and 1862. But Southerners grew perplexed by the changing tide of battle as they started to lose. Religious leaders explained that military defeats were God's way of chastening and purifying Southerners. Not religious before the war, President Abraham Lincoln gained faith as the war dragged on. He suggested that God's divine purpose for might be something different from simple victory or defeat. Lincoln said, both may be, and one must be wrong. God cannot be for and against the same thing at the same time. Women in the Civil War. The home front became a world of white women and children, and in the South, white women, children, and African slaves. Women assumed new duties managing households and farms, raising funds, and volunteering as nurses. There are also farmers, plantation managers, clerks, munitions plant workers, and school teachers. In the absence of clergymen, lay women assumed responsibility for church services. Over 20,000 women served as nurses and other health related volunteers. Dorothea Dix, better known as the reformer of the nation's insane asylums, became the first superintendent of women nurses. Clara Barton, who would later help found the American Red Cross, oversaw the distribution of medicines to Union troops. Some 400 women disguised themselves and fought in the war. Some served as spies. Many assisted in cooking meals, writing letters, and assisting with amputations. Camps on both sides were visited by camp followers. These are prostitutes. Sarah Seeley enlisted in Company F, 2nd Michigan Volunteer Infantry Regiment, under the Elias Franklin Thompson. She had run away from home at age 17, disguised as a boy, to avoid an unwanted marriage. After enlisting in the Union Army in 1861, she served for nearly two years as a male. Ironically, in her Secret Service duty, she penetrated Confederate lines disguised as a woman. She deserted the Army and resumed life as a female in 1863. She later published a fantasiful but highly successful account of her experience in the Army, it's titled Nurse and Spy in the Union Army, published in 1865. She and her husband moved to Laporte, Texas in the early 1890s. On April 22, 1897, Sarah Seeley became a member of the McClellan Post Grand Army of the Republic in Houston. She is the only woman member in the history of the GAR. The Civil War took its toll on families. As might be expected, the number of widows, spinsters, those who had never married, and orphans mushroomed. Poet Emily Dickinson commented, many women looked upon the war with a chastened stare. 
This completes the video on the personal agonies of the Civil War, and as always, may the Force be with you.